Today I have three tenor recorders to show you. So there's the Kung Studio in Olive, which is a Baroque recorder with a Kirke Windway. And it's also got a double key at the bottom. This double key is what I call the right way around, because when you hold down both keys, both pads close for C and just the right hand key, one pad closes for C sharp. And then I have a uh, Merck Rosenberg in Ebony. It's a similar age, I think, to this Kung. This Kung was manufactured in 2006. And this Merck, which I bought secondhand, apparently is a, a similar age. It's a Baroque recorder with a curved windway. It's hard to see on an Ebony recorder, but you can possibly tell that the windway on the, the Merck is much, much smaller than on the Kung. It, no, it's really hard to see. So at the bottom of this one, we've got a double key. And this is what I call the wrong way round. Unfortunately, when you press down both keys, bottom one is still open and that's a C sharp and just the right hand key means both the keys are closed and you have a C natural and then I have a King Studio which has Baroque styling on the outside a sort of a simplified Baroque styling and a straight windway so not quite the same it doesn't have that same slightly reedy sound that you'd associate with a baroque recorder and the category i would put this one into is student recorder it has a rounder flutier sound and it's um a gentle sound it's lovely for ensemble music and it's a very pleasing sound for students uh, no keys to worry about and this bottom hole here is on a bump so actually it's a little bit easier to reach um, and it's probably the easiest stretch out of most keyless tenor recorders and this one's made of maple it's quite a dark colored maple i was quite surprised it is actually maple um, and this dark i hadn't seen one so dark before so i'm going to play a couple of easy nice easy tunes on these recorders so there's um a book called time pieces which many recorder players are familiar with so this is book one and there's a lovely beret in here which i've got up on my screen which has been used at, on the grade three syllabus so i'm going to play that one and then i'm going to get out 50 graded studies and there's a lovely grade 2 study called Quaker's Grace in there which I know a lot of people have been playing so I will that's up on my screen I'll play that one too the beret goes up to top B so that's good so you'll be able to hear how the recorders perform up there now I don't think I've ever practiced this beret so C sharp We'll go now. I'll start with the Kung Superior in Olive. <laughs> Okay, here on the mark in Ebony.
notice I didn't run out of breath on this one because it uses less air. And that now on to the, the Kung's studio, the keyless student tenor. to doubt that one used the most air yeah looks actually a similar size wind weight as a superior but it just felt like it used a, a, just a little bit more air right i'm going to play them again on the quaker's grace which um so we're going from bach which was very much a, a baroque piece to beret oh written written for lutes not for recorders that one uh, to the Quaker's Grace, which is a Playford dance, John Playford, and I'll play the recorders in the opposite order in case you wanted to hear the studio next to the superior. <laughs> Quaker's Grace on the King Superior. at the beginning when I played this was just my thumb finding the thumb hole because obviously as I keep changing recorders the the tone holes are all in slightly different places now I don't know if I'm right in thinking that the kungs might have larger tone holes not, not a, yes not a huge amount but they are a little larger and of course <laughs> larger tone holes are easier to find with your fingers so if you have a lot of trouble finding the tone holes on a recorder because perhaps um, you don't have uh, enough feeling your fingertips um, I know a lot of people that I teach have got um, some form of 
well not a lot of people but I, I teach people who have numbness in their fingertips and or in certain fingers and so actually something like a kung is is quite good for that and if you're on a descant or soprano recorder and you buy a Mollenhauer Denner they've got teeny tiny tone holes um especially their, their you know their descants and their trebles or sopranos and altos if that's what you call them and whereas if you get a, a Mollenhauer Dream recorder they, they've got absolutely enormous tone holes by comparison and you know you've got a really good chance of, of finding those holes easily but then there, there are different problems with the, the dream recorders that you might run into like they're a two-piece recorder so you can't turn the bottom joint around um, and some of the top notes are a bit more fierce so th there's no perfect recorder I like all three of these recorders um, this one doesn't belong to me uh, but it is it is very nice to play and I do enjoy playing it I would say this has got a pleasant rounded tone but it's not as extremely as focused as other recorders might be but absolutely ideal for ensemble playing of course <laughs> all the way two octaves in a second and I'd say the intonation on this particular one is excellent so this one um, I don't know if you can hear that the sound is still covered there's, there's overtones there it's not so focused and and what I call boring uh, where there's not, not many not much going on um, it's focused but there's other stuff going on around the the focused core of the sound and I like that it's got some horrendous fingering chart comes with this recorder for more than two octaves in a second of notes and all sorts of lovely fingering so you can go really high if you want to um but you know most of the time you're not going to need those if not 100 percent of the time um and then this one yes so none of these none of these overtones that i'm talking about if that's even the right word um there's there's a focused core of sound and not much going on around the core of the sound but somehow it's got quite a, a pleasing, delightful sort of character to its sound. It's a recorder I bought second hand that's been played quite a lot and that does make them sound nice, I think. So let's hear what this one sounds like. I've got to remember to only press one of these keys below C. <laughs> top D doesn't work on like a standard death count fingering I expect you probably have to have that key down as well oh yeah you have to definitely have that one down as well perhaps I should have put it down on the king as well um it's very easy to get up to top C on this and you can hear that sort of slim focus sound and you can blow it a bit harder and get a nice sort of buzzy sort of sound in the lower register um but you see if i compare it again to the kung It's a very different beast indeed. And then of course 
studio, mustn't miss it out. A very different beast again. Hear that lovely light fluty sound that it's got. And I think I think beginners really like that sound. I really like that sound. Um, but to me, it just feels like there's not enough, quite enough weight behind the sound. I like a bit more weight behind the sound. And beginners don't. <laughs> they don't like to be heard, I think. And I would very much enjoy playing that studio recorder in an ensemble. If I go ensemble playing, I use this one. This one's lovely to play in ensemble as well as playing solo. I suppose this one would be solo because um, you probably wouldn't, ideally you wouldn't be playing an ebony recorder in a consort because um, it's such a hardwood but I don't see that it would matter at society recorder players or something in a large group, it's just it's not a big deal. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful and you've enjoyed the video and um, that you're just all enjoying your recorder playing at whatever level you play at because it, it's a wonderful instrument at all levels and it's a really really enjoyable instrument to teach as well it's my main instrument so i do teach several instruments but recorder is the one that i love the most <laughs>